Hello everyone, it's Brett here, Lionheart84. So I'm just going to make today, I'm not going to do a fully detailed video showing the whole process, but I'll just quickly skirt over it and show the edited sections. I'm going to try making medlar jelly uh, today for the first time, as I've got um, enough medlars off my plant this year. These have all been blatted now so they've been allowed to carry on ripening after the first frost so I've ripened them inside in the dark so they're all squashy now so they should be fairly edible. There's about a kilo of um, medlars here that's what I happened to harvest luckily. Um, I'm not going to give all of the weights in imperials I might do it in the description but you can easily um, convert it so it's roughly uh, a kilo of medlars to about 800 millilitres of water, half a lemon and an apple. And basically all I have to do is cut the apple up into quarters or even eighths, cut the medlars into quarters and combine them. Lemon will need later, it's the juice of half a lemon that comes later. So you cut the medlars up, water, and the apple cut up into the saucepan, then you bring it to a gentle boil and then you simmer gently until the fruits all soften nicely. Now, this will be pretty soft already. Um, and then I'm, I'll carry out that process and just uh, do a short video on that as well once I've uh, got them all prepared. Okay, so we're done with preparing these. Now, you haven't got to remove the seeds, you haven't got to peel them. You literally just cut them into quarters or halves if they're small ones. Obviously, if you get any when you open up and they're completely bad and mouldy inside, you can throw those away. It's not like making cider where you probably wouldn't even bother because you use badly sort of damaged apples. But um, in the case of this, I thought there's no point putting the mouldy ones in, of which there were a couple. Um, the recipe will call for granulated sugar. Um, I can't give you the quantities yet because that would depend on how much juice comes out of this because you have to measure the uh, the sugar in an approximate uh, proportion to the juice and as I said there's half uh, juice of lemon which goes into it afterwards and um, you don't have to add pectin or use sugar with pectin and I got this for Christmas this is a jam making sieve and obviously once it's these have been cooked and simmered for long enough I'll be pouring that through there and that strains out all the seeds and the um, all the seeds and the skin and the core and anything you don't want to eat and that just leaves you with a clear juice which is what you make your jelly with so I'm going to get on with um, cooking this up now and then we'll come back to the video okay so I've now brought this to the boil and all I'm just going to do is give it a very gentle stir initially to make sure that everything's well mixed up. And then reduce it to a just get it boiling and then just reduce it to a gentle simmer and you want to simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until the apple is soft. Obviously the medlar is soft already so that doesn't need to soften much more. If you're using some slightly underripe medlars they might be a little bit um, hard but if we simmer this gently for about 15 to 20 minutes then the apple should have softened and it means everything will be uh, cooked through enough. You don't want to boil it too aggressively because you'll end up um, boiling the flavour away from the jelly you're trying to make it just needs to simmer very gently like this on a low boil and we'll come back to this when we're ready to um, to strain the fruit through the uh, through the jelly bag okay so I've let this uh, I've let this cool for a little while just so it's not too hot to deal with it and then basically you just need a ladle and you spoon this through your jelly sieve. Now I got this for uh, Christmas. I was asked for it as a Christmas present because I didn't have one of these for straining jams and jellies. You obviously use it for jellies particularly. And it's just a case of 
gradually spooning everything that's in here. Through the safe. And according to the instructions, basically you let this uh, you let this drain for about 12 hours. So I'm going to actually let this drain overnight, and then you end up with your uh, the juice from the cooked medlars, and then you then reheat that with the sugar, and we'll follow up in the next thing. So I'm going to carry on labelling this in. I'm not going to video it all. And then once that's uh, been left overnight, we'll have a look and see how much there is, and then I'll give you the next pro next part of the process. And one thing I very briefly forgot to mention: you mustn't squeeze what's in here, or crush it, or move it around, because if you do that, it forces a lot more um, a lot more sort of particles through the net, and you end up with a much milkier liquid underneath it. You don't want this to be too cloudy and if you start mashing that and, stir and disturbing it you'll end up with a very cloudy liquid. So we'll see how this looks after it's soaked for about 12 hours. So we're on to the next stage of the video. I've, um, I've let the, uh, the bag of medlar juice and fruit drain or uh, filter overnight so this is the amount of liquid I've got so basically you now need to weigh the quantity of liquid you've got and then you add 75% uh, by weight of sugar to that so say you've got 100 grams of liquid you add 75 grams of sugar if you've got 400 grams of liquid you would add uh, 300 grams of sugar so let's just see what this uh, what this actually weighs that we've got here. I'm going to weigh the liquid in grams, of course. So we'll pour that into here. Total weight of 500 grams. So you just divide that by four, which would be 125. And then you multiply that by three so 375 so you just got to weigh out 375 grams of sugar then you add the two the two to your saucepan and then you add the juice of I've got juice of half a lemon that would be plenty for that quantity there so all I've got to do is uh, add 375 grams of sugar I could probably actually add it in here and just add it straight onto there so if I take this up to 875 Roughly, not meant to be exact. That's it, gone a little bit over, 880, won't be a problem. And now I'm going to add that to my saucepan, put that on the heat, and then I'll come back with the next uh, set of instructions. Okay, so the next stage, all you need to do is once you've added your sugar to the juice. It's slightly, um, you can see it's slightly cloudy, but it should probably clear um, once it's cooked with the sugar. And you just heat this gently and stir it until your sugar is dissolved. Once the sugar is dissolved, then we very gently will boil what's in the saucepan. And I'm going to use a cooking thermometer, jam making thermometer. Um, which will allow me to measure the temperature of the liquid and if you look on here you should be able to see the setting for jam which I think is about, about 105 centigrade so just, uh, just over, just around 220 Fahrenheit if you're American and uh, once it's heated up to that level and boiled for a little bit at that temperature the, um, the jam should be ready to set. Now if you haven't got one of these cooking thermometers there is a way to check if the jam 
is ready using a plate that's been chilled in the freezer so I'll be showing you that as well and then you can have a look and um, and I'll show you how to check when the jam is at about the right setting temperature hopefully so I'm going to warm this for a while until it gets to near the correct temperature okay so never very quickly while you're waiting for the uh, the solution to start boiling and it's now um, you can see the sugars hopefully you can see the sugars now dissolved in it uh, current temperature is about 90 degrees um, you need to sterilize your jars and lids the lids I'm boiling in water the jars I'm sterilizing in a, an oven turned up to about 140 centigrade whatever the equivalent is in Fahrenheit um, probably about 10 minutes is plenty in there but you do need to sterilize the jars to make sure they're not contaminated and therefore will uh, cause too much mold um, I'm not going to go into detail because you can easily look up online how to sterilize jars there's hundreds of short descriptions and videos uh, the key thing is to make sure they are sterilized is just make sure you get less uh, bacteria and molds forming on your uh, jellies or jams as I said there's plenty of videos about how to make jams and jellies this is just a rough this is for my own interest to see how we get on with the medlar uh, jelly and what you can do is once it's all dissolved you can turn up the heat so you get a nice um, what they call a rolling boil on here if you get any scum forming on the top here that can just be uh, that can be taken off the top with a, uh, a spoon that you just use to skim any scum off so we'll see how it uh, progresses and then you just keep an eye on the temperature and when it gets up to about the right temperature I'll also test it on a uh, chilled plate so you can see if it uh, if it works as it's supposed to now I know this isn't the right temperature because I've got a jam thermometer now it really does make sense to have one of these but if not you're going to have to keep testing regularly so basically you take your chilled plate out of the freezer and you take a little spoonful carefully of the mixture drop it on there now when that is hot enough when that's hot enough and you leave it on there for a few seconds you better push that and that will wrinkle now that is not wrinkling at all so that is not set enough so we'll put it back in the fridge put that back in the freeze in the plate wipe it off if you like and then leave this boiling for longer than you try again okay so as you can see now I know I'm getting very close to the setting point because I'm using the thermometer um, you can see it's very very much close to it so what we're going to do is take a little bit of the this out and try this now on the plate so you pour a little teaspoonful on there leave it to set on the cold plate for about uh, 10 seconds and you give it a push with your finger because the plate's chilled so the jam will cool very quickly now that is not that's not wrinkling enough so as far as I'm concerned that's not ready yet but it's close but it's probably a degree or two shy of the temperature definitely not wrinkled enough so we're going to give it another minute until it's been boiling for about 15 minutes and then we'll come back in about a minute's time and try again okay so we're going to try again now we're probably slightly over the peak temperature now and that would give you a slightly firmer set so let's see what happens spoon spoon here drop it onto the chilled plate leave it for about 10 seconds So that's just starting to get a wrinkle on it now. When you push it, it's just wrinkling a bit with the fingers. So I think that's as hot as I need to go. Should set. It should set okay. It's well above the temperature for setting jam now. It's probably about 2 degrees centigrade above it. So I would say that will be enough. 
so we'll go to the next stage in a minute so once you believe your jam's at the right temperature you just turn it off remove it from the heat and while that's starting to cool incidentally if you find out it doesn't set because you didn't heat cook it enough you can always put it back in the saucepan and reheat it but I'm hoping that I've got this warm enough that it's going to set so let me just get my these are my sterilized jars in here and I'm basically going to leave them in this dish when I get them out let's see if I can manage to do this one handy without having a serious accident put this on a heat proof surface like that then obviously everything I'm using has been heated so you want to be a little bit careful with what you're doing I'm using a funnel to pour it and the reason I leave the jars in here several reasons obviously the jars are very hot the jam is very hot and if you do happen to get a breakage when you pour the jam in it means the glass jars are trapped inside this saucepan so they won't go everywhere so let's go back to this we'll take this off the heat take our thermometer out <coughs> excuse me sneezing if you have a lot of scam scam on the top of the uh, jelly then you can obviously touch skip you can spoon that off I thought I'll show you how to do it it's not much here so it's not really a necessity but if you had a lot of scum on it Basically, you just want to spoon the scum off because you don't really want that on your jelly. It's a very small amount, so it's not worth worrying about, but I'll just sort of do it to show you. And then you simply pour this. I've done three jars, so I don't think there'll be enough to fill three jars. And then you simply pour that. Might only be enough for one jar because it didn't have a particularly large quantity of. It. It's probably going to be one and a bit jars. I think I've gone slightly overdone it on that one. Let's see if that's cooled down enough to hold. I've gone a little bit too high. But it's not too, not too serious. Put the second one in there. I, I did three jars because I don't have too much. Just didn't get enough fruits this year to make a large quantity, but it doesn't really matter. Just pour out, as, get as much as you can into the jar. Looks to me like it is starting to set already. Okay, that'd be enough for a taster anyway. Now. out and these jars and the lids will be hot so what I'm going to do is just uh, fish the lids out of the boiling water with a, a pair of tongs I'm not using you can get wax paper discs to put on uh, on your jelly but I don't think it's really a necessity Let's see if I manage to get it on there without any uh, ones on there. Well, obviously if you're a professional jam and jelly maker you'd have a lot more equipment than I've got. And then we put that, let's just rest it on top of there if we can. Now you just need to screw the lids on tightly and I need another hand to do that because basically these jars have come out of the oven and they're hot so you need to hold, move that one, you need to hold the jar with a cloth and the lid with there's another cloth so I'm going to put the foam down uh, stop it now and just screw those on tightly okay so now that's done 
you can see that looks to me like a very nice colour. Now I believe that as the jars cool, it'll probably suck the lid down a bit and it'll form a bit of a vacuum. But if I hold that up, that looks quite nice to me. What it tastes like is another matter. Um, but we'll leave those now to cool down and hopefully they will set and we'll have a nice set thing. So a jar and a half out of, um, that was about a kilogram of fruit. So possibly I could have used more water and got a bit more juice out of them possibly but it's, it's enough for the time being but um, obviously if you had a large tree with uh, you know 20-30 pounds of fruit on it you can make an awful lot of jars of jelly so I hope you found that interesting I'm going to make some labels up for these I mean, and stick the labels on so I knew when I made, made them they'll probably keep for months and months if they're in a fridge but um, hopefully it's going to taste okay and I'll probably do a tasting. Very nice to eat this jelly, like quince jelly, it's very nice with uh, cold meats, cheeses and whatever else, with perhaps with other types of hot meats as well as a condiment. But um, I hope that was of some use to you, not a detailed uh, jelly making video, but it was just for my interest really to see if it works out for these uh, medlars. So thanks for watching the video, hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up. Welcome to share if you think it might be of use to anybody. Do subscribe to my channel and of course click on the bell to get updates on new videos when they come out. I'll catch up with you all soon. Brett out for now.